I did some more work on this project using the 16 by 16 analog switch matrix, using it as a loop switcher for switching guitar effects in and out of a signal chain between the guitar and the amplifier. In the previous project, I was using this old audio jack breakout board to plug three guitar effects into, as well as plugging a guitar into this breakout board and another cable coming out of here going to the amplifier. And I'm using an Arduino Nano to control this switch matrix over I squared C. But this original demo automatically switched effects in and out of this signal path. I had no way to control turning them on and off. It was just something quick to get going. For a quick review of this 16 by 16 matrix PCB, we have the 16 X and Y inputs or outputs available on headers. So when I draw it on this grid to represent what's happening in the project, 16 X channels are along here and 16 Y channels are here. And I arbitrarily decide anything that's an input signal goes on the X and outputs come through the Y. So a guitar goes in on an X input and I can make a connection to make it come out on a Y output, go somewhere and then come back in on another X and so on. And this matrix itself is controlled with a GPIO expander and that is communicated with over an I squared C bus running at five volts. So I'm taking the Arduino Nano and putting serial clock and data here along with a ground and the Nano is providing a five volt supply to this board. Now that I've worked on it a little more, I've added an OLED and it's getting power as well from the Nano. So the serial clock and data going to this matrix board is also going to this OLED. So whatever device is being addressed by the Nano is the one that receives commands. And this display lets me see what is happening based on buttons I press. So I'm also using this other breakout board just to give me access to four push buttons. So if I press the bottom right button, it will configure this matrix in a specific signal chain and I can see for confirmation on this OLED what exactly was configured. Here it says we're going from the input, which is the guitar, into the matrix, and then the guitar signal will go into effect one, that will go into effect two, and then into three, and then out to the amplifier. And that's similar to this original project where I had three effects I could switch, except now I'm just going X0 as my guitar input, and then X1, 2, and 3 are the three effects. And likewise, the Y0 is the output going to the amplifier. Y1, 2, and 3 are outputs going into each of these effects. And another change I made, this audio jack breakout board, I've been using this, I made it about a year and a half ago. I've used it for audio projects off and on, but for this project, I want more flexibility as well as more jacks available. I can have up to 16 jacks going in and 16 more coming out. So to make this scalable, I made this four jack breakout board with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So I have four quarter inch stereo tip sleeve ring jacks so I can plug in instrument cables or patch cables and I have just tip ring sleeve headers connecting to each jack even though I'm only using the tip and the sleeve as a mono cable for this purpose. And I used a JST connector footprint but it is 2.5 millimeter pitch so I can just put 0.1 inch headers here as well. The idea is I put these so close together, you can see a little gap in the silk screen, but then it's even closer up to the PCB edge on both sides so that I can stack these side by side and then including manufacturing tolerances on how each board is cut. It should still allow me to space a bunch of these jacks so it's all equal in the long run. And if I put two boards side by side, it will look like this a single row of jacks. And I want to be able to have two rows because one row is going to be inputs and the other is going to be outputs. So if I flip a board upside down and then I mount this securely, for example, I may want to 3D print some sort of a panel that I can mount these to and it will hold everything apart so nothing shorts out. Then I can just make a modular expandable 
set of audio jacks to go into the matrix. So as well as expanding the hardware setup, I added some more features to the sketch. So I'm reading in four push button switches and based on which one's pressed, I do a preset signal chain. So the fourth button here will configure it so a guitar input will go to the effect on channel one and one to two, two to three, and then three goes to the output. So in the old sketch, if I wanted to turn on all three effects, I would have to brute force in the code, go and open any previous nodes that I need to reconfigure, and then I would go and close X and Y coordinates as needed. But now I made this channel order array of 16 elements. So all I'm doing now is starting at element zero in the array. I'm listing out the signal chain where it's assumed I'm starting at the guitar input at X zero. So then I look to my first element in my array and it says one, which means I'm going to go from guitar input to the effect plugged into channel one. Effect one routes into effect two, two goes into three, and then zero means we're back to Y zero, which I'm now going to say is the final output to the amplifier. So then once I set up the effect sequence in this array, I call this function to go and configure all those X and Y nodes as needed to implement this signal chain. So to try and make this more visual, what I've done in the serial monitor, I show a representation of the matrix. So when you power up, it defaults so that all of these nodes are disconnected or open, so nothing is going to be routing through the matrix. This is a better way to represent what we're doing. So I press button four and I detect there's a new signal chain being configured. So the channel order goes from main guitar input to channel one, then two, then three, and then to the amplifier output and everything else is negative one because it's not defined, we're ignoring anything there. And after it goes and configures the matrix to implement this effect sequence, it's showing here the node connections it made to make this happen. So channel X zero is the main guitar input, and we had to close a junction here to make the guitar go to the effect on channel one. So the guitar connects to this Y line, going to channel one. Now that'll go to the input of the effect pedal for channel one. The output of that effect goes likewise into X one, same as here. This is Y two, which goes to an effect, and then it comes out and goes back into X two. They're all corresponding. So effect one comes out to the pedal, comes back into channel one, then it connects to two, goes out and comes back to channel two. And then it joins a node to connect to channel three, goes to the effect and comes back on channel three. And then we're done. So it connects to Y zero to go on out finally to the amplifier. So as I expand this system and I add more switches and more configuration options, we can start turning on a whole bunch of signal paths here to implement up to 15 effects along with the main audio in and out. So now with three effects on channels one, two, and three, the guitar on zero and the amplifier on zero, let's run through the demo of just pressing those buttons in this test setup and seeing how the effects can get switched into the signal chain. So we start out with the clean guitar sound with no effects, just going guitar straight to amplifier. Then we're adding just a distortion. Then we add reverb. tremolo, which is basically turning the volume up and down. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to continue developing this and expanding it to support more than three channels. I want to get some better switches, like foot switches, to stomp the effects on and off. And I need to make some sort of a panel that I can mount multiple of these boards to, to get the sequence of input and output jacks and make this whole thing more of a stable setup instead of something that's ready to fall apart. So we'll be revisiting this project. 